All right. Good afternoon. Uh, Instagram family, we're going to wait for you. All right. Instagram family, welcome. Facebook family, welcome. And all of you others and all the other social media platforms right now, the ones that uh, we're able to, uh, to share this on is uh, Instagram and YouTube. And I think it's um, Getter, I think is one of them. Um, we're limited right now because of uh, not having access to them on Pastor Mary's iPad. And so as soon as I get my iPad back repaired and working perfectly, then we'll be able to broadcast on the rest of them. But we welcome you this afternoon. It's Pastor Bill Emmons. This is Thursday's Word. And our ministry is Covenant Faith Center, uh, also known as CFC Ministries International. And we welcome you to our um, Thursday's Word of Exhortation. And that's what this is uh, actually about. It's, it's about an exhortation that will uh, hopefully encourage you, uh, maybe motivate you, build you up, give you some strength to finish off the week strong. Amen. So today, uh, our exhortation, if you want a title for it, uh, just the word prosper with an exclamation point. I realize that there are a lot of people on the internet right now preaching against what they call the prosperity message. But I'll repeat what I heard another preacher say. There is no prosperity message. There is no healing message. There's simply the gospel. The gospel is good news and is good news to everybody that has anything that is part of the curse manifesting in their lives. So, you know, think about it. The, the, when when uh, Adam and Eve sinned, uh, they lost their contact with God. They lost the nature of God, the life of God. Uh, and, and they took on the nature of the devil. The sin nature, the curse is the nature of the devil. And so the curse is out there. But uh, so when you talk about a specific aspect of the blessing, and if you read Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through uh, 14, you'll begin to get an idea of what's in the blessing. And if you read verses 15 through the end of the chapter, uh, you'll get a really clear picture of what's under the curse. Anything that's bad, evil, uh, or anything that can harm you, uh, destroy your life, uh, negative circumstances, different things like that, they're all described there. They don't have to be named by the name of the situation, but the description is there. And I'll, I'll repeat what I've repeated so many times over the last few months. Jesus gave us a dividing line. And that dividing line is, in John 10, 10, the thief cometh only to steal, to kill and destroy. That's the devil's nature. He said, but I came to give you life and that in abundance. So when people start condemning what they call the prosperity message, Really, prosperity pro, it starts with provision, and then it can move into having abundance and what we might call prosperity. But that's part of the gospel. What's good news to a poor a poor man, broke, you know, bankrupt? Uh, you know, he doesn't have to be poor, broke, and bankrupt anymore. And so we need to quit listening to these people that want to basically take all these blessings away from you and tell you the only thing that matters is, you know, that uh, you are holy and, you know, that you uh, walk this righteous life. Well, that's, that's true. I'm not debating that. But they forget that in being a child of God, and when we, when we discuss and, and actually study the word redemption and uh, salvation, it, they mean things like wholeness, uh, provision, uh, healing, blessing, uh, and, and again, the contra the contrary, the opposite to the curse. So once we understand what the curse is, and that's the nature of the devil, and the Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee, then we need to resist the temptation to be broke, to be financially uh, in debt and, and beat down. Uh, that's, that's the devil. He didn't want you to be blessed. Financial blessing is part of the gospel. Physical blessing, healing, and health are part of the gospel. 
And so we need to understand that instead of listening to preachers who want to tell you that, uh, you know, believing God for finances is wrong uh, or, you know, financial provision or even, oh, God forbid, prosperity, you know, that's, that's wrong. That's just, you know, uh, lust of the flesh. No. Now, the Bible does say that uh, the love of money is the root of all evil. We're not talking about getting extreme and where money is the only thing that we care about and the only thing we really strive for. Uh, we're talking about the full gospel, which incorporates God's blessings upon our natural affairs. So I want to read a verse to you that always comes to me when I think about this. And Pastor Mary, can I get some air in here? Mm -hmm. uh, 3 John 2, uh, I'm going to read two translations, King James and the Amplified. And uh, I want you to get the full feel and insight to what's being said here. It says, Beloved, I wish, one translation says, I pray, above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Now, the Amplified says it this way, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. So clearly there's statements here in, in this short verse that tells us that it is God's will for us to prosper. And let me clarify what prosperity is. It's not just money. Prosperity is spirit, soul, and body. God wants you to prosper in your spirit God wants you to prosper in your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. God wants you to prosper in the physical, which includes health in your body, but it also includes finances. In this day and time, you can't hardly do anything without money. Uh, back in the, in the biblical times, uh, you could grow crops and raise sheep, and, and um, you could, to a degree, to a large degree, you could survive on your own without any interaction financially with anybody else. The, the, um, the animals, the, the, the sheep, the, uh, the goats, the cows, or the whatever animals they're raising could give you meat. The crops you grow will give you the, the fruits, the vegetables. And of course, if you have a well, that gives you water. Uh, you build your own house back then. A lot of people, obviously, that's how cities got built. Um, you know, you have a roof over your head. And so the basic needs of the physical body were taken care of. But nowadays, it's, it's a whole lot harder to live that lifestyle. You, you have to be off the grid, <clears throat> out in the middle of nowhere with nobody around. And, uh, you know, we're not used to being uh, farmers and raising our own crops. We're not used to tending cattle or, or sheep or any other animal. Uh, to provide for meat. Uh, that's just something that society, for us anyway, in this country, uh, are not used to. Not, not that you can't do that, but you, you know, it's not the norm. Building your own house. Uh, you know, I don't know anybody in my 74, almost 75 years of living, I don't know anybody that's physically built their own house. Well, I take that back. I know one person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yost, right? Mm -hmm. Yost. And I know another person. Too. Do I know them? You know of them. Of them. Okay, now I'm talking about somebody I know that actually has built their house. I only know one person. Um, but it still took money to do that because they have to buy all the lumber, the, the conduits, the electrical wiring, the plumbing, the, the grading has to be done by somebody. Uh, I mean, it, you know, the list goes on. And so it does take finances. Uh, even in that situation, to do it, unless you go out in the woods and chop down trees and make uh, logs out of them for building a log house. Um, so you get get what I'm saying here, that there is not just a need for natural provision, particularly if you live in a city, you need natural provision. You got to pay rent or mortgage. You got to pay utilities. Uh, you got to buy food at a store. Even if you have a garden, most gardens won't produce what you need all year long. So you still have to spend money on food. Uh, and, and of course, that list can continue on. Uh, if you drive a car, you gotta have gas, you gotta have insurance and so forth. 
So God wants us to be blessed in every realm. When you read Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 through 14, it really simplifies it and makes, makes it clear. He says, I'm blessed when I rise up. I'm blessed when I lie down. I'm blessed when I sit in the house. I'm blessed when I walk by the way. In other words, I'm out of the house. He says, I'm blessed when I go out. I'm blessed when I come in. And he, he refers to, of course, back then they did raise crops. They did raise animals. And so he talks about the animals being blessed. He talks about the fruit of the ground being blessed. He says, your cupboards are blessed. Your storehouses are blessed. And then he gets to your family that your children are blessed and, and everything you set your hands to will be blessed. Well, that's prosperity. That's not, he didn't say there'd be, be barely enough. The word blessing <clears throat> indicates more than just basic, barely get by provision. So you need to, you gotta go back and study that. <clears throat> prosperity of the soul, because in this verse, uh, 3 John 2, I pray above all things thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. He was talking about the soulish part of man, the mind, the will, the emotions. In order for the soul to prosper, we have to be prosperous spiritually. When we're talking about the blessings of God, you need to prosper in your spirit. A, a, a strong, a person who's strong spiritually in their relationship with the Lord is then going to have that ability to have a uh, prosperous soul, a prosperous mind, mental thinking, reasoning, uh, and so forth, understanding. And, and your will begins to be conformed to the will of God. And then uh, your emotions become controlled by the, the word of God operating through your spirit. Uh, and then we get into the natural, the flesh. And the flesh has to come under the control of the spirit. So even that's controlled by spiritual laws. Uh, and, and then, of course, sickness and disease is under the curse. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse. He bore our infirmities, our sickness, our disease, our pain, our sorrow, our punishment, so we wouldn't have to bear them. So we have to believe and understand <clears throat> that physical prosperity beyond money uh, is health and healing. And uh, I learned uh, years ago it's better to believe God and walk in divine health than to get sick and believe for divine healing. Now, divine healing is still legitimate. And, you know, if, if you do come down with symptoms, you need to believe God and, and you can receive your healing. But there's another level beyond that called divine health, where you just don't get sick anymore. You don't get symptoms of, of flu and, and cold and, and you know, whatever's going around. So there's always another level we can uh, go for and believe God for. All right. <clears throat> so having a prosperous spirit and soul are dependent on, listen, dependent. A prosperous spirit, a prosperous soul. We're not talking about just money. Prosperous, successful, okay, uh, is dependent on how you deal with your spirit man. When you're born again, you receive a new spirit. And, and the Bible, Jesus talked about, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so when we feed on the word of God on a daily basis, it strengthens our spirit, man. It builds faith. It builds hope or vision. As we develop spiritually, then the next step is the development of our soul, mind, will, and emotions. As we develop the soul in the things of God and the laws of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, it will trickle down then into beginning to develop the blessed or prosperous physical realm, that you begin to be blessed in the natural, blessed in your body, blessed in your finances, blessed in your animals, blessed, in other words, blessed in your businesses, anything you set your hands to. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, <clears throat> verse 9. I'm going to read this from the Passion Translation. For you have experienced the extravagant grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was infinitely rich, he impoverished himself for our sake. So that by his poverty, literally that's in the 
the original language, we could become rich beyond measure. Now that's, we would call that prosperity. And that's what God's plan, God's will for you is to prosper. Prosper in your spirit, prosper in your soul, prosper in the flesh, in the natural realm. All right. So the question that comes up is, does it really mean natural and financial prosperity or riches? Does it really mean that? It says that. Is that what it really means? Well, the word prosper or rich that's used there in the Greek is pluteo. And that's from Strong's Concordance, uh, the Greek dictionary. <clears throat> it means to be or become wealthy, literally and or figuratively. To be increased with goods, that's, that's literally. To, made, to uh, be made or wax rich. In other words, increase in the, in the natural realm. So clearly, when you read 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, the reference is a direct reference to the natural realm. To be uh, increased, to increase with goods, to wax rich. Now, 2 Corinthians, uh, going back to chapter 8, I want to read verses 10 through 12 from the Passion Translation. So the Apostle Paul, writing to the Corinthian church, is now commenting on this subject. So here are my thoughts concerning this matter. What matter? The, what's stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you have experienced the extravagant grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was infinitely rich, he impoverished himself for our sake, so that by his poverty, we could become rich. Well, one translation says he became poor. Another translation says that um, uh, he became poor, that through his poverty, we might have abundance. It means the same thing. So now in verse 10, he's referring to those statements. <clears throat> so here are my thoughts concerning this matter. And it's in your best interest, since you made such a good start last year, both in the grace of giving and in your longing to give. What's that? Well, he, he is specifically talking about finances. He's talking about giving or sowing financial seed. Verse 11, you should finish what you started. You were so eager in your intention to give so go do it. <laughs> I like that. It's very, very plain. Just do it. <laughs> finish the act of worship. Now, finish this act of worship. What do you call giving? When you're giving for the gospel's sake, when you're giving to the poor, you're giving for the work of God, when you're giving uh, to bless. In this case, he was talking about uh, blessing another church uh, in another country. All right. He said, Finish this act of worship. Have you ever stopped to think about your tithes and your offerings are acts of worship? And they're mentioned, actually, this financial things are mentioned more by Jesus than any other give, single subject. Why? Because by becoming a giver, you take on that giving nature of the Father. God gives to us, and then he wants us to act on in that same nature and become givers to bless other people. Well, if you, if you just barely have enough to pay your own bills and put food on the table and so forth, you got nothing extra beyond that. Then how can you be that giver? How can you be that seed sower and where, where the blessings begin to flow back to you? <clears throat> you should finish what you started. You're so eager in your attention to give. So go do it. Finish this act of worship according to your ability to give. He's not saying, you know, you, if you can't afford it, you know, well, give anyway, or go borrow and give, you know, getting in debt. He's saying it's according to your ability. Verse 12, for if the intention and desire are there, the size of the gift doesn't matter. Your gift is fully acceptable to God according to what you have not what you don't have. There's been times I've, I've wanted to give $1,000, $10,000, a million dollars, but I didn't have it to give. 
Well, God's not going to condemn me because I didn't have it. We use our faith and we eventually got to the $1,000 tithe and offering. We eventually got to the $10,000 tithe and offering. Now we're still believing God to be able to give a million dollars. We haven't reached that yet, but we're working on We're believing God for that. Now there's nothing I can do to go out and get a million dollars. I have to believe God for something like that. It's, it's bigger than me. And a lot of times the vision and goals that God gives you are bigger than you. And you have to believe God. It's not going to just happen in a natural way. All right. The whole point there is that this whole thing from 3 John 2 down to where we are right now is that he said, I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So he covers us in every realm of our existence, spirit, soul, and body. I'm just giving you some steps along the way and proving to you that he is talking about uh, provision, but beyond provision. He's talking to you about abundance as well. So when preachers get on, on the internet and they tell you, well, you know, don't, uh, it's a sin to believe God for uh, financial prosperity or abundance. That's just greed. That's just the flesh. Uh, go back and read these verses instead of listening to that stuff because God wants you to be blessed, not just so you can bless others, but including being able to bless others. God wants you to prosper. He wants you to enjoy life. He doesn't expect you to walk around, uh, you know, like a hippie, uh, you know, wearing sandals and, and robes and living off the, you know, whatever you can find. God wants you to be an example of the blessings of God so people can see God's blessings in your life. Now, let me finish this. Natural or godly prosperity is dependent upon spirit and soul prospering. And I told you how to do that. You spend time meditating the word of God. Build yourself up in the word, okay? As you meditate the word of God, it'll begin to change the way you think. Your soul is going to begin to change. Then your actions begin to, because the Bible says be doers of the word. So how do you begin to increase? You begin to sow seed. I heard one preacher say, oh, that's a bunch of nonsense, sowing seed. Well, tell the farmer that. We'd all be starving if farmers didn't sow seed. The Bible says every seed reproduces after its own kind. So every time you give, and, and I know most of you that are listening, uh, if you listen for a length of time, you've, you've become givers. Maybe just offerings as you're able. Eventually, you begin to tithe because that honors God. That, that's a holy thing. But when you give, understand that that is a seed. And when you plant that seed, it's going to reproduce after its own kind, which means finances. You have the promise of it, finances coming back to you. All right. In fact, Jesus said, whatever you give for the gospel's sake, it'll come back to you in this lifetime a hundred times as much. The other verse that I think of uh, on that is uh, the word says, <clears throat> given it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. That's here now in this lifetime. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That's not barely enough. That's not just needs meant. That's abundance. All right. This puts you in a position to be able to bless the work of God when you support ministries, whether it's your home church or ministries like ours that, you know, you're getting ministered to and blessed over the internet uh, and individuals as well as you help somebody. There's been many times somebody's walked up to me and asked for money to buy food. I don't give them money to buy food. I'll take them and buy some food and let them have it that way. Uh, but we're able to do that if we have some extra. And if we don't have some extra, how can we help them? So we, yeah, we ought to believe God for prosperity in every realm of our body, not just finances and not just spiritual, but spirit, soul, and body. And you can. So the bottom line is that beloved, I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. So prosper in your spirit, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. Be blessed. Amen. All right, I'm going to let you go. I went five minutes over. I'm not going to apologize. It was worth it.
So have a blessed day. I hope this encouraged you and motivated you. And understand God wants you blessed. So receive it, receive it by faith. And when you get blessed, praise God and testify, tell people about how God has blessed you. Don't be intimidated, just start sharing. Well, God blessed us. We had a bill, we didn't have the money to pay and God brought in extra money, we paid the bill. Whatever it may be, share it, share your testimony. Amen. We will see you Sunday at a regular time. And I got a special guest going to be here. So make sure you tune in.